My name is Oren Finnegan. Uh, I'm the head of our forensic unit here at the International Committee of the Red Cross. What we see is um, um, the unfortunate uh, natural uh, reaction of panic. Uh, I think people are obviously become very concerned when uh, we see a large number of, of deaths uh, in a short period of time. The key thing that we advocate for uh, time and again is good, clear communication from um, the responsible authorities. Um, there is sometimes uh, the, um, the reaction to say, let's not talk about the dead, that will scare people. In fact, our experience is if we don't uh, if the authorities cannot be upfront and transparent with people as to what's evolving, it only instills greater fear and concern. And that's not just in disasters, but in cases of people going unaccounted for in conflict in general. Um, it's the same case. People need information, and uh, providing that quickly through a coordinated and well-structured uh, means um, addresses those concerns and allays unnecessary fears and myths that naturally uh, occur um, at a time like this. And it is unfortunately a common misperception. There is no scientific evidence. In fact, um, uh, in cases like this, it is essentially important to uh, not hastily dispose of the dead. And this is a key message that we pass um, and other leading agencies pass in, um, in our guidance during disasters, for example. Uh, we uh, developed a manual in co collaboration with the World Health Organization and the Federation uh, of the Red Cross in this regard. Um, to remind people of the need to take the necessary steps to ensure that the dead are properly tracked and um, uh, when being uh, put in temporary or long-term um, uh, disposition that uh, they, those cases are properly documented to ensure that families uh, do not uh, end up having their loved ones unaccounted for. And I think this is really, really important. Taking the time to ensure the proper documentation and tracking of the dead helps alleviate the fears uh, and the concerns of uh, families. There is no doubt that the major uh, challenge or limitations that are being put in place in terms of funerary services uh, for the dead are centered around the living. They're centered around social distancing and not about the dead themselves. Um, and I, I think that's a very important point to make as some people uh, may think that uh, the limitation of the number of people at uh, funerary services is to do with the dead, but no, it's to do with the need for social distancing for the living. Um, so yes, there is no doubt that it has and, and will have a, 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 an impact on, on, on families. And we need to work uh, with um, concerned authorities to understand how best we can uh, mitigate this um, through uh, dialogue again with communities, with concerned, uh, whether it be religious leaders, to see how to best address the needs of families and concerned communities in this respect. So we must remember them and we must remember that uh, and ensure that institutions um, and decision makers put in place the measures to ensure the proper identification uh, of the dead and to ensure that the dead don't get lost or rapidly disposed of, thus elevating the risk of them becoming unidentified and thus causing further trauma um, for communities and families concerned. From my own experience, they, I think we have to remember that working with the dead um, can, be, um, can have a, a, a significant impact on, on one's um, uh, health and the need to uh, not feel uh, alone and um, to be able to ensure, and that's another thing we try to work with, um, is to ensure that uh, institutions put in place measures so that staff can be properly briefed and debriefed on handling the dead. Staff 
uh, that engage with these types of procedures must be trained. They must be prepared for what they are going to deal with. And that is a key point that we, we make uh, as, a, as an institution, is to ensure that people are not adversely affected. Personally, yes, there is no doubt that I've seen at first hand the impact that that can have. And it only strengthens my message when I speak to other practitioners to reach out and for decision makers to ensure that the proper measures are in place. The most important advice that we can give today is to ask uh, high level decision making authorities to convene those who uh, need to be involved in a preparedness plan to be brought around the table and to begin working on those preparedness plans today. Because if we don't plan for today, we will not be able to respond tomorrow. The reality is, is that we've seen in countries around the world, not just in this pandemic, but in disasters, when those um, efforts are not made in advance, then the uh, fallout is a lot more uh, traumatic for, uh, for all of those concerned, and in particular the communities that are, are most affected. And we work extensively globally to do exactly that, to help bring people around the table, to share experiences from other uh, um, scenarios that have faced similar problems, so that people can learn from, uh, from the past and plan for the future.